The first thing you should learn if you want to be a tattoo artist is how to draw. The ceiling of your potential as a tattoo artist is your skill to sketch. The better you draw, the better you will be at tattooing. This is a natural skill for certain people. Others must devote time to honing their artistic abilities. Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Today we are going to talk about the top 10 tips to become a tattoo artist. Before we get started with the video, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. Number 10. Pick one style. Traditional or realism. Traditional tattoo designs and realism are both excellent beginner tattoos for budding tattoo artists looking to hone their skills. This is why. Realism. Often, what slows artists down is determining what to draw. This is not a problem with realism. You only need to copy a photograph. Furthermore, realism is a terrific style because it is in demand. Realism is one of the most popular tattoo styles around the globe. You can earn a living anywhere in the world if you can do reality. As a starter, stick to black and gray. You'll simply need to concentrate on the image's values rather than having to work with color on top of everything else. Realism helps you concentrate on the technical aspects of drawing, shading, and tonal accuracy without having to learn other challenging drawing concepts, perspective, and proportion. It is, nevertheless, a tough style. Traditional. Traditional tattoo designs are the simplest to draw and are what most tattoo artists begin with. The interesting thing about traditional tattoos is that many of the design components are repeated in each tattoo. After painting about 50 to 100 traditional style tattoos, you'll be able to draw things like ships, flames, water, flowers, and more. Tattoo design gets much easier after you learn how to create these elements. You won't need reference images because you'll be relying on muscle memory and expertise. After that, you'll be able to create designs even faster, and it will become easier and easier. Stick to smaller designs at first regardless of style. Number 9. Pick 1-3 to three artists and emulate their work. Find an expert tattoo artist whose work you appreciate and follow them on Instagram. Make an attempt to imitate their tattoo patterns without tracing. You won't learn anything if you trace every design. However, as you continue to mimic the work of prominent tattoo artists, you'll pick up on these three things and start to naturally incorporate them in your own designs later on. Developing these instincts by analyzing the work of an artist will save you a lot of time. Pick one medium. You will spread your concentration if you try to learn how to use watercolors, acrylic or oil paint, charcoal, digital, graphite, and copic markers all at once. It will take you far longer to master any of them than if you concentrated all of your energy and effort on one. Focus on one medium if you want to learn how to start tattooing quickly and advance swiftly. I wouldn't recommend starting with graphite pencils or an iPad. Practicing on fake skin. Tattooing people is not something you should do. That's why there's fake skin. Learning to practice skin drastically minimizes the number of terrible tattoos you get at the start of your profession. You're ready for actual skin when you can make a smooth shade, pack color, and pull a clean line in a single pass without blowouts. This is one of the most fundamental aspects of learning to tattoo. If your friends and relatives are willing to get a tattoo, they will not be available every day for you to practice on. Furthermore, when you initially begin, you will be giving them free tattoos because most people will be doing you a favor by allowing you to practice on them. Cons of fake skin. The only disadvantage of practicing on artificial skin is that the texture differs somewhat from human skin. For starters, artificial skin does not bleed like real skin. Second, the surface of artificial skin is flat and very substantial, so you won't have to stretch the skin like you would with a real client. Number 8. Needle Depth The term needle depth simply refers to how far the needle penetrates the skin. Choosing the proper tattoo needle depth is critical not only for avoiding pain, blowouts, and scaring, but also for ensuring that the ink in the tattoo's image is clear and long-lasting. To comprehend tattoo needle depth, you must first comprehend the structure of the skin. While you don't have to be an anatomy specialist to be a tattoo artist, you should be familiar with the three layers of skin. As a tattoo artist, you must develop a feel for determining the proper tattoo needle depth. If you're tattooing a line, you'll notice a vibration in your stretching hand when you've reached the correct depth in the skin. The correct needle depth is determined by the area of the body being tattooed. Skin on the shins, for example, is considerably different from skin on the arm or eyelid. Number 7. Ride the tube. This entails pressing the tube all the way into the skin. You can use this strategy to prevent yourself from going too deep into the skin and getting blowouts. However, riding the tube causes ink to splatter from the tip of your machine, making it difficult to view your stencil. And it hurts the customer more since you're driving the machine's tip across a freshly inked line. Number 6. Float the needle. Floating the needle refers to keeping the machine away from the skin. The machine's stroke must be long enough to achieve the desired needle depth. This is sometimes referred to as hanging the needle out of the tube, 
While you must manually regulate the depth, no ink will burst from the needle tip and you can see your stencil, allowing you to tattoo more precisely. However, blowouts are possible if you don't know how to correctly manage the depth manually. You must have a long enough stroke to fully retract your needles into the cartridge or tip with each up and down cycle. If it does not, you will not obtain good ink flow and your lines will not be solid. For further information, see our article on machine stroke. Number 5. Lining. Making sure your tattoo machine is properly oriented is a significant component of achieving beautiful lines. The machine should be pointed in the direction of the cue. Where the needle enters the skin will be somewhat behind where the ink will be administered. When you move the needle ahead, the ink moves forward as well, leaving you with a clean line. When you drag a line across or to the side, one side will be sharp while the other will be fuzzy because the ink is blowing out to the side of the line. Number 4. Use three points of contact. Having three points of contact like a tripod can keep your tattoo machine steady, which is crucial when pulling smoother lines. Here's how to set up three points of contact. Place your tattooing hand's pinky finger against the stretched hand's thumb. Place your elbow against your ribs or on a massage table. Place your wrist on a table or a tattoo chair. Instead of moving your hand to tattoo a line in this posture, keep it stiff, hinge at your elbow, and move your entire arm. This will assist in keeping wobbles out of your lines. When choosing the thickness of your liner needle, also known as line weight, keep in mind that the thicker the line, the easier it is to get straight. As a result, many newbie tattoo artists begin by tattooing the broad outlines of traditional style tattoos. A larger needle, on the other hand, makes it more difficult to get the ink into the skin. While this means fewer blowouts, it can also make getting a larger line into the skin with a single pass harder. Thinner lines, on the other hand, are more difficult to keep straight. Any hand or machine wobbles are significantly more noticeable. However, because the needle tip has less surface area, it is much easier to penetrate the skin and create a firm line. However, this is a two-edged sword because it makes it easier to delve too deeply into the skin, resulting in blowouts. Stretch in the same direction as the line while stretching the skin. If you stretch the skin in the opposite direction, it will stretch unevenly, and the line will seem wavy. Number 3. Shading. When shaving with only black and gray, your needles can be a little shallower than if you were packing color. Curve magazines and buckbin needles, in addition to regular needles, will help you achieve considerably smoother hues. Because they rely solely on shading as opposed to shading plus color, black and gray tattoos are easier to achieve than color tattoos. You can't get those distinct values without the gray wash combined with the appropriate solutions. You may learn how to make your own gray wash in individual caps in our tattoo shading guide. Number 2. Packing. Packing ink into the skin entails creating a dense fill on the skin. When packing, move the needle in a small oval pattern. Because tattoo needles have several needle barbs, you don't want all of them to line up and damage the skin. To avoid this when doing oval forms, tilt the needle at an angle so that the needles never line up. Tattoo dark colors first when packing color. Color needles work best with 12 gauge needles because the individual needle barbs are bigger and the area between the barbs is wider, allowing you to pack more ink into the skin faster. Furthermore, your needles should have a regular taper. Longer, tapered needles hold less ink, which slows you down. Number 1. Hygiene. When it comes to tattoo cleanliness and sanitization, there's one rule to remember, pretend everything has AIDS. Keeping this in mind will help you get the right tattoo and avoid cross-contamination. If you're still unsure whether tattooing is for you, there are a few tattoo machines that don't require a large investment. However, if tattooing is something you intend to do for the rest of your life, it's worthwhile to invest in a good tattoo machine. Injector Flitter Nano Rotary Tattoo Machine, Chang and Hawk Rotary Pen, and Spectra Edge X Rotary Tattoo Machine are among our top picks. That's a wrap on the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.